As everyone's coming in and getting seated, uh, can we do a quick show of hands? Are there any Michaels in the room? Any Michaels? I'm seeing no Michaels. Okay, that concludes the mic check. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Had to do it. Aloha, mahalo. Thank you so much for the opportunity to present here today the State of Global Travel, Hawaii edition. For any of you who have not met me yet, my name is David Reichbach. I'm the senior, I'm the, oh Jesus, what is my title? I'm the Vice President of Development for Future Partners. It's been a long morning, huh? Um, I have a really passionate history of coming to this amazing state. I'm based in California. I'm a California born and bred boy, but Hawaii is definitely my favorite state. It is the best place to visit. So anytime he was up here being like, but Hawaii is your favorite, right? I was like, but no, it really is. Um, and these are just some pictures from my recent travels. I am honored to have my mom with me here today. Uh, so thank you so much for the warm welcome. Um, so, uh, if you don't know us at Future Partners, we are a full-service creative insights firm. We are passionate about finding winning strategies that capture hearts, minds, and market share, and we are so honored to be one of the research partners for the Hawaii Tourism Authority and for the Hawaii VCB. Um, I'm going to focus on domestic U.S. traveler insights, but to set some context for that, I'm going to share some data from our global traveler sentiment as well. This data comes from the State of the International Traveler. It is an annual tracking study of the top 16 feeder markets to the United States. That includes Argentina, Australia, Brazil, Canada, China, Colombia, France, Germany, India, Italy, Japan, Mexico, Netherlands, South Korea, Spain, and the U.K. Ha, ha, ha. Thank you. If no one's laughing, I'm not doing a good job, so I need that kind of validation. Um, we survey over 800 likely international travelers from each of those 16 markets every year. So that's over 12,800 surveys a year, and we ask them all different types of questions about where they want to travel in the next year, specifically travel inbound into the U.S. Um, in an open-ended question, when we ask global travelers around the world where they most want to travel and we give them three fill-in-the-blanks, the number one destination that they continue to write in every single year is the U.S. by about a third of all global travelers right now. The top contenders from a totally unaided, top of mind, where you most want to travel, um, second to the U.S. by a margin is Spain, then France, Italy and Canada. As you can imagine, where people want to travel is regional and is impacted by which countries international travelers we're talking to. If you look at the chart on the screen, and apologies, there's a lot of data in there. Don't worry, I will make sure you get the slides. Um, if you look at the chart from Australia, and we are talking to Australian international travelers, their number one written in destination is New Zealand because it is the closest destination to them. But a very close second place is the U.S. The U.S. is the number one written in destination from international travelers in Argentina, Brazil, Canada, China, and Colombia. We're number three in France and Germany. Insert joke about the French. Nobody laughs here. Interesting. Okay. Um, we're number one for travelers in India, Italy, Japan, and Mexico. Uh, we have some more competitive landscape in the Netherlands, in South Korea, Spain, and in the UK. For anyone who did write in the United States, we ask them why. What is it that's really drawing you to our amazing country? And the top responses are food and cuisine, relaxation and rejuvenation, our general atmosphere, opportunities for shopping, and arts and culture. And I want to stop for a moment just to say the word culture again, because in a follow-up question where we ask them in an unaided, open-ended response, and yes, my team is responsible for translating all of those surveys back into English so that we can process them. When we ask them, dive in deeper, and what is it about American culture that you really love? It's the diversity of different cultures that is drawing people from around the world to want to visit our home, our place that we find so special. On the flip side of that coin, the things that are keeping global international travelers from coming into the U.S., the top response is our cost. It is expensive to travel. The strength of the U.S. dollar around the globe is something that absolutely impacts decision making. But coming up at third place is concerns about gun violence, which is something 
absolutely on the minds of global travelers when they're thinking about coming to the US. Also up there, toward the top, too high for my liking, is concerns about personal safety. When we look at which countries are reporting the highest levels of concerns for personal safety, it is our friends in Asia. India, South Korea, Australia, Japan, and China are the top countries saying that personal safety is one of their biggest deterrents to coming to the US. On the marketing side of things, when we ask global international travelers what types of content are most important in helping you make the decision on where to visit, what types of content are going to help you decide between one country or another, between one state and another, between one city and another, the top most important type of content is hotels and lodging, where they're going to stay. Second to that is restaurants and food. And number three is safety. In fact, travelers in Australia and in China say that safety is the number one most important content type to help them decide where to travel. Now, it is not all bleak. There is a huge opportunity for global international travel uh, this year in 2024 and as projected into the next two years, 25 and 26 are going to be great for inbound into the US. Every single country that we survey in reported more days available for international trips and more budget available than they have in the last four years. When we look specifically at which countries are most excited about the western region of the US, and yes, I do have this data specific to Hawaii, but I have to move through the international stuff very quickly. Um, Japan, Germany, and the Netherlands are actually the, the most excited about this particular region. So very interesting to see that that um, aligns really well with all the data that we got from our um, presentations yesterday. In a totally open-ended question, um, when we ask travelers around the globe within the United States, where do you most want to visit? They can write in absolutely anything top of mind. Hawaii is the fifth most commonly written in destination, follow, uh, just following New York, Los Angeles, DC, and Vegas. An extremely strong brand, and it continues to thrive year over year. So that kind of sets the stage globally. Now I'm going to jump into American or domestic traveler sentiment. This comes from the State of the American Traveler. The State of the American Traveler is the longest tracking survey of American traveler perceptions, motivations, and behaviors. We've actually been fielding this survey since 2006. So we have a great history of data with American travelers. Uh, we ask them all different types of questions about where they want to travel, why they want to travel, whether they're watching that latest TikTok trend. I'm not kidding. Thank you, one laugh, whoever you were. I appreciate you. Um, we talked to over 4,000 American travelers each month, so we have great wealth of data, and we continue to get, this data gets better um, as time goes on. I'm gonna start with the financial sentiment for American travelers, because that really sets the scene. Um, currently, the top barriers to travel right now within the domestic US are financial in nature. Travel is too expensive right now is the number one reason, followed by personal financial reasons, and airfare was too expensive. Uh, when we look at just that top answer, that travel is too expensive right now, we see that for most of 2022 and 2023, that was a very elevated response. The 2022 was the year of largest inflation, not just within the US, but around the globe. That dropped a little bit. I'm physically animating this for you. That dropped a little bit in 2024, but not enough. Um, when we ask about recessionary concerns, currently 40% of American travelers say that they think a recession will happen sometime in the next six months. Thankfully, that has also been on a kind of downward slope, if you will. Um, currently, a third of American travelers say that right now I am better off or much better off financially than I was exactly a year ago. And that has also been stepping up every year. It is not stepping up as fast as I'd like it to, but it's growing, which is a really good sign for American traveler confidence in their finances because, as we know, travel is expensive. And if they're not confident about where their money is, then they're not going to be traveling as much. 35% say that just in the short term, right now is a good time or a very good time to spend on leisure travel. This has also been growing, but like, like this kind of yoga pose, you know, like uncomfortable. It's, it's not growing fast quite enough. 58% of American travelers say that with all the different things that are in their current budget, leisure travel is going to be a somewhat high or extremely high priority. And this was actually on a downward slope up until the very beginning, I want to say like March of 2024, when it shot up and is now at an elevated 
rate. We're actually really excited about this particular metric and are going to continue to be monitoring it looking into the future. So what do we look at when we're looking forward? What is it that we say is our sign of signal of American traveler uh, intent? And it is excitement. Currently, 87%, a huge amount of American travelers, report themselves as a 6 to 10 on a 10-point scale, saying that they are excited for travel in the next 12 months. Throughout the course of the pandemic, this was a very rocky metric. It's not one that I'm going to choose to physically act out because it might knock me off the stage. But ever since the beginning of 2023, American travelers have shown huge heightened levels of excitement, and thankfully that has continued to stay elevated into this year. So let's talk about marketing trends, because we love to market to travelers. How do we actually reach them? When we ask American travelers, what, where do you want to see messaging? Where would you be most receptive to hearing about new destinations, to getting inspired about where to visit? The top channels or mediums are websites via search engine, email, Facebook, online content, such as articles and blogs, uh, Instagram, review websites, streaming video, and then 12.9%, my personal favorite, TikTok. If anyone in here does not use TikTok yet, come and find me after. At the break, I will convince you. It is amazing. Just, you know, getting off my platform. Um, when we look at this data by generation, it's exactly as you might anticipate it for a Gen Z, our youngest generation of travelers. And yes, Gen Z is currently old enough to rent a car, so don't discount them. Um, their top two preferred channels of hearing messaging from you are Instagram and TikTok. When we look at millennials, and I am a millennial, so I can make fun of millennials, because it's easy. <laughs> Thank you. Um, our number one is Facebook. I'm not really a Facebook user, but I'm not the average. Um, followed by email. When we look at both Gen X and Baby Boomers, our more mature traveling generations, we see that websites and email are their top two. We see that Gen X um, fits streaming video into their top five. Baby Boomers review websites. So think about um, if your content is generationally appropriate. Print is not dead, period. Uh, 30, that usually gets a laugh. 37% um, of American travelers currently say that they use some form of offline or traditional content. Um, the top forms of online, offline content are um, traditional, uh, sorry, travel or lifestyle magazines printed, um, free or printed destination guidebooks or pamphlets. Uh, many of these travelers, the reason why they use printed or offline materials is because they bring them with them. So it's not just about planning before you get to the destination, but it's about impacting your travel decisions while in market. And yes, our youngest generation of travelers, Gen Z, like print way more than us millennials do. I don't know what's wrong with them, <laughs> but they do. Um, when we look at social media, the most frequently used social media channels, and the question is um, uh, at least once per day, most frequently social media used channels of American travelers are Facebook, followed by YouTube, Instagram, and TikTok. But when we flip the question and say, which social media channels did you actually use to help plan your trip, get inspired to take a trip, YouTube jumps to the top. You might be wondering why that is, and it is for any of you who do any kind of video uh, marketing, know the awesome power that video has to inspire travel. We actually ask this question at a number of different phases in the travel planning process. When people are getting inspired, when you're giving them ideas, when you're generating that passion for travel before they go on the trip, absolutely any of the video streaming platforms, uh, YouTube and especially TikTok, are extremely impactful. When it comes to after the trip, where they're going to share their experiences and connect with their networks, that's where the Facebook and the Instagram come right up to the top. Because um, strangely enough, travelers don't take a lot of video. They consume a lot of video, but they take a lot of pictures. Um, and it's, I think there's an interesting opportunity to kind of flip that script in the future. Um, official destination marketing assets. Currently, a third of American travelers say that they actively rely on official DMO assets, such as the Destination Marketing Organization website, um, online or printed version of the visitor guide and visitor information centers. Um, currently, one in five use your DMO website before coming to, uh, to Hawaii. And uh, can I just amazing work to the team that works on that website, because um, there is so much great content. It's absolutely beautiful. 
Um, we ask American travelers about their last week. We say, in the last week, have you done all of these different things that we ask them? One of them is definitely having fresh fruit and uh, brushing your teeth. I think that was the biggest takeaway from me yesterday. Did you brush your teeth? Um, but anyway, 46% of American travelers currently say that they have daydreamed about travel in the last week, and that is right where it was a year ago. Um, this has stayed elevated since um, basically beginning of 2022, and thankfully, even during the pandemic when people were not allowed to travel, they were still daydreaming about travel. Over one in 10 um, have currently researched travel ideas offline. That's a little bit higher than it was just a year ago in this exact month. 40% um, have researched travel ideas online. This is a huge jump from where it was a year ago. So even though they're daydreaming at about the same rate, they are actively planning a lot more than they were previously. And right now is the absolute right time to get your messaging in front of them because they are also booking. Currently, one in five American travelers have booked, have made a reservation, have purchased an airline ticket um, within the last week. And that is showing a huge trajectory this year, higher than we've seen in previous years heading into the um, end of the year. So really, really important to get your messaging out to travelers right now. Let's jump into some specific Hawaii um, KPIs that we've been tracking. We track the state of Hawaii um, in all of the work that we do, uh, and we have a lot of great time series in this data. Your team at the Hawaii VCB has access to most of this, um, and uh, they use it really, really effectively. So you should all honestly give them a round of applause for the amazing work that your team does for you. Um, when I take our data and I filter down to just those out-of-state American travelers who say they are likely to visit the state of Hawaii in the next 12 months, the top places where they live is California, New York, and Texas, their top markets, Los Angeles, New York, Chicago, San Francisco, that's me, woo. <laughs> anyway, uh, <laughs> no one's excited about that, that's fine. Um, over 80% fly, uh, a third cruise. By the way, even that third of cruise may not look high, it's still higher than the average for most American travelers. Um, more than a third travel for sporting events. Um, almost 60% travel for special events and festivals. Um, and this is a really well-traveled group in terms of the number of trips they're taking. People who are likely to visit the state of Hawaii report taking 11 trips in the last two years. Um, that's higher than the average by a wide margin. Four leisure trips stand out. Um, their favorite types of uh, paid accommodation are full service three or four star hotels followed by luxury. 90% um, of them are that heightened level of excitement to travel, which is a good margin higher than what I had shown you on a previous slide for the average American traveler. Um, a third of them expect to travel more in the next year than they did in the most recent 12-month period. The other destinations that they're looking at other than Hawaii um, are traveling to New York, to Florida, actually a fifth of them right in Hawaii in an open-ended question. Um, when they're looking internationally, your biggest international competitor for domestic travelers likely to visit Hawaii is Italy, interestingly enough. 67% um, are making travel a financial priority, and they report having over $5,500 of annual travel budget to spend. Um, when we track specific destination attributes about Hawaii, the top rated attributes, and I know the text is very small, but I'll read it to you, are scenic beauty, relaxation, weather, a place to escape, new experiences, and fun atmosphere. I love that exploration is also really high up there. Um, when we look at just the top two, because um, we track this data for all 50 US states, um, so looking just at scenic beauty, Hawaii is absolutely the number one, um, followed by Alaska, California, and Colorado. Those would be the, if you were, if you forced American travelers to compare all the states just on scenic beauty, you are leading, um, but Alaska is your closest competitor. For relaxation, the second highest ranked attribute, um, your closest competitor is Florida, but thankfully you're beating them very, very well, so go Hawaii. <laughs> um, deterrence. 
the things where we ask American travelers what is specifically making you less likely to visit Hawaii, the top two are too expensive and too far away. You know this. This is not a surprise to anyone. What I want to point out is that what is not a deterrent is risks of safety, homelessness, uh, politics, um, weather. I love that weather is not a deterrent at all. It's like the lowest one on this. Um, I, I live in San Francisco, and when I look at this data for my city, it is absolutely crime, safety, homelessness, cleanliness that are the biggest deterrents. You don't have a lot of that. And when we go back to not just what domestic travelers are looking for, but what travelers around the globe are looking for, you are really set up in a great position to market yourself. Um, the next up is going to be um, presenters from the Hawaii VCB who not only take this data and run with it, but um, look at specific, you know, much filtered down and narrower traveler segments, your target segment. Um, and uh, I'm so honored to get to share perspective from the national view. So thank you so much. <laughs>